Hey guys, it's Faye and this is Day with Faye. Today I'm gonna be giving you guys a bunch of moving tips. So, I was actually on a little hiatus from filming and posting videos because I moved into a new apartment. I plan to be doing a new apartment tour soon once we get our decorations up and we find some patio furniture. So that's gonna be ready for you guys in a couple of weeks. But I actually have a really fun fact for you guys. Um, in the last five years, I have moved seven times. Seven times. That is a lot of times. With all this moving I've been doing the past five years, honestly, I feel like I am the master at moving. So let me give you some tips. So first things first, when you start moving, the number one thing to do is to go through all your things, find things that you wanna sell, find things that you wanna donate. I know sometimes it's really hard to go through all your stuff because you can find yourself being really attached to certain items. Questions I ask myself is, do I like this? Do I use this? Is this, could this be sold for more than what is valuable to me right now? Now I like to use Macari and I like to use Poshmark. I use Macari for like technological based stuff, but I also sell some clothes and stuff in there. I actually sell the same clothes that I sell on Macari as I do Poshmark, but since Poshmark takes 20%, my prices on Poshmark are more expensive. With Poshmark, I mainly sell um, my luxury items because while they do take 20%, which is a big chunk of change when you're selling a luxury item, it is like safe, it goes through Poshmark first before it gets to the buyer. So I like personally using that. Sometimes I use eBay too for like used electronics, not like brand new. Like for example, my Canon 70D was broken and I was quoted at like $450 for a new one. And I was like, I'm not gonna pay that. I might as well just buy a new body. So then I decided, let me just put it up for eBay auction. I don't know how much it's gonna go for. And it went for $80, which I was really surprised about. Now I would start looking at this stuff kind of like a month before because sometimes it takes a long time. I sold most of my stuff within a month but I still have a couple of things that are still for sale on Mercari and Poshmark. You wanna pick stuff to sell and to donate so that you have less things to pack and potentially have more cash in your wallet at the end of it. Now the next thing we wanna talk about is boxes. Now when I first moved, I heard this rumor that if I went to Walmart after, I don't know, like 9 p.m. that there was a bunch of these free boxes. Now that rumor is true, but absolutely do not do that unless you are literally moving across the hallway because those boxes break and they can barely hold anything and they're really really bad i think the pain of getting one of those free boxes and having them open on you and potentially ruining the stuff that's inside depending what you pack in there it's definitely not worth it you can get a relatively inexpensive box from like Lowe's or Home Depot. I think I spent like 80 cents, 80 cents per box, which is not that bad. They're really sturdy. I have had no problems of my box just like caving open and ruining things like I have with the free boxes that you find at like Walmart. So definitely invest in a good sized box that will make your moving a hell of a lot easier. Okay. Next thing you wanna do with boxes is you wanna buy way more than you think you need. Way more. Now, I actually made this mistake on this move. My fiance bought a whole ton of boxes and I was like, yo, there's no way that we're gonna use these boxes, let's return some. Because fun fact, if you do have too many boxes, you can return them at Home Depot or at Lowe's and they're totally okay with it as long as they're unused. I was like, these 20 boxes, we only need like five. Turns out we needed like 10. So if I could go back in time, I would wait until everything's packed. And then that's the moment that you return the boxes. <laughs> Another thing to know is that you want to buy a bunch of different sizes of boxes as well. You don't wanna get all mediums because I'm telling you when you come to pack the kitchen and if you pack a medium sized box full of dishes, that box is gonna be extremely heavy. And not to mention because there's just so much like height in that box, like there's gonna be like a lot more room for like movement and potentially like damaging your fragile things. So what I do is I use small boxes for really fragile things like dishes or really heavy things like books. 
I use my medium sized box for my clothes and like stuff I had on my desk and things like that. Another thing is to label your boxes. You need to label your boxes, but not only label your boxes, and this might be a tad type A personality of me, but I actually kept a journal that detailed each box and what it contained. And specifically, if there was stuff that I know I need, like for example, my contacts, I put in my first aid box and I knew that that was gonna be weird. And I knew that once I moved in, I'd be like, where did I put my contacts box? And I really did do that. I'm like, let me check my journal. Oh, contacts box in first aid kit, great. Boom, I knew exactly where it was and it was easy to find. Sometimes too, if you have stuff that you kind of just wanna open now because it just makes you feel more at home, then I put like stars next to those boxes because we had like 40 boxes. So there's a lot of details and sometimes you just wanna have a star to be like, oh, open that right now, great. Now also on each box, I put the number on all four sides because I would see it no matter which way it was. And I also put what room it belonged in. Like you wanna keep the items in that box to be in that room. So that's super helpful. But I like to do this because once I move into my place, I put all the dining room boxes here, all the living room boxes here, bedroom stuff there, blah, it makes things so much easier. Another tip with packing is that you do not want to make a box full of heavy stuff. You always kind of want to like diversify your things, otherwise it's going to be way too heavy to carry. For example, my fiance and I own a lot of books. I'm not about to stuff a whole medium sized box full of books. That is just not smart. So what you do is you want to have the bottom layer of the box be full of like heavy stuff. So bottom layer, books. And then you can put not that heavy stuff like from the medium to top part of the box like blankets or throw pillows or I don't know stuff that's just like light and not dense. That way it's easy to carry. Now I don't know if this is like common sense or whatever but you want to have your the face of your box the right way and if it's not you need to have arrows indicating which is right side up because like i mentioned in the previous number you're gonna have heavy box heavy stuff on the bottom all the way up to light stuff at the top just because that's easier to carry now if you flip that over then you have your heavy stuff crushing your soft stuff which is not good you want like let's say that this is a box you want the words to be right side up. But sometimes, because it's late and it takes a long time to pack, sometimes you accidentally pack it this way. But it's okay. Just take a Sharpie and put a bunch of arrows on all four sides of the box and you should be good. Items that you want, you wanna have packing paper, which is really good for dishes and things like that. Bubble wrap for other things that could be fragile, like things that are made of porcelain or glass. Like I like to put bubble wrap with that. Yeah, and then also you wanna buy a lot of tape, more tape than you think. You wanna get like shipping or packing tape for your boxes. And then I would use like masking tape for like when you put bubble wrap or packing paper on things. Other than that, try to give yourself a lot of time for this. I would say give yourself about a week and a half to start packing. It's gonna be annoying, but you're gonna get through this and it's gonna be okay. <laughs> and definitely give yourself like a day to clean up your apartment or whatever house you're leaving so that it's in good condition, so that your security deposit all comes back to you. Anyways, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. And if you're watching this and you're about to move, you're gonna get through this and it's gonna be okay. <laughs> I would love for you guys to like the video if it was super informational for you. I really appreciate it. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Bye guys.